Here, boy. Here, Max. Come over here. I've got a question for you. Do you think that God stays in heaven because he too lives in fear of what he's created? Now dig on this. Welcome, 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 Whoa. one and all, to classic movie banter. Hello there. You know that show where me, that guy Brenton, and that guy over there, Nathan, Hello. we talk about films that are twenty years, twenty years Woo. or older. And uh, I guess in our book, that makes them classics, I guess. But we talk about whether those films are still worth watching or whether they're still worth, I guess, taking the DVD case, tearing it in half, giving half to your dog to just chew on, and taking the other half and throwing it in a in a cage where, where a large tiger is that may be having suicidal thoughts. We don't know. <laughs> but, uh, but that's what we do here. Uh, uh, and basically, we throw in some banter in there for some good measure as well. Mm. So, uh, yeah, Nathan, how are you feeling? How are you feeling today? Oh, I'm feeling elated, Brenton, because it's 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 animal time, Brenton. Animals are bloody buzzing all around the world because RDJ, for some reason, feels like he needs to talk to some dogs after finishing the Marvel films. <laughs> Nathan, I've got to say, I am buzzing like a bee because this is our first film review of 2020, officially. It is. It is. We're in a new decade, Brent. A new decade, new us. We've we've dismissed looking back on 2019 as we did last week, and we're looking at the new. And what better way to look at the new than to drag Eddie Murphy back into the forefront, like Dolomite, and and talk about his filmography? <laughs> Nathan, today we are reviewing Doctor Doolittle, released in 1998, directed Woo! by Betty Thomas, who also directed mm. such hits as uh, the Brady Bunch movie. Yes. And John Tucker must die. <laughs> you, listeners, you can't see this, but the way that Brenton said hits, his eyes could not have rolled further than the planet's circumference. <laughs> Mate, they nearly popped out. I nearly had to stop uh, the episode and run to the hospital, but you would have to have taken me there because I wouldn't be able to fucking see. It's true. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, dear. Yeah, because, well, you know, we, we, we love celebrating movies. We do love celebrating movies. We loved celebrating gems that, you know, you mm. may or may not remember, and uh, Doctor Doolittle is just one of those films that is so relevant, oh. so relevant that they had to remake it uh, with it, RDJ. So many you know times, I mean? RDJ. You know the Eddie Murphy of our modern times, I guess. Oh, <laughs> exactly. You know, I would have loved to see Eddie Murphy as Iron Man. You know, <laughs> I would definitely love to see Eddie Murphy as Iron Man. Oh, it would have been amazing. He would. <laughs> yeah, he's just like I am Iron Man, but just Eddie Murphy just clicks his fingers and he's like, I like waffles, and then he snaps Thanos's. Glasses love <laughs> but brendan i tell you what rdj's film it's not getting much love so we thought we would direct our love towards something else in in the canon e.g eddie murphy's film now we could have talked about the original from the 60s brendan absolutely and we haven't because reasons and we thought why not just talked about rdj why not talk about eddie murphy instead so we're here and brendan i would love for you to pitch for me this movie of dr doolittle <laughs> Can you pitch me the movie? Alrighty, here we go. Nathan, when you were a young blood, did you ever have the dream that you could, you know, talk to animals? Have conversations with your pets, you know? Discuss oh. the real meaning of life from the dog's perspective. Absolutely, because like animals and me were on the same intellectual level, so I thought it would be the best opportunity to try and talk to them. Well, Nathan, this film basically takes that dream and acts upon it. Eddie Murphy is a young child that discovers that he can talk to his dog, a.k.a. Ellen DeGeneres. <laughs> <laughs> We've all had that moment, haven't we? But unfortunately, his father doesn't like that idea and thinks his son is fucking nuts. So he oh, decides no. to, like, stamp that out of his young child and Eddie mm. Murphy grows uh, into a man, basically. Right. Surprisingly Overnight. enough. Overnight. <laughs> and uh, and uh, becomes, a, becomes a medical professional. <laughs> a doctor? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, he is a doctor. He is a, he's a doctor, as the title suggests. And he <laughs> discovers miraculously at some point, for some reason, that he can, mm. again, talk to animals. And that's basically the plot. <laughs> ah! <laughs> that's, that's basically well. everything you need to know going into this. And it tries to... This is a family film, supposedly. Yes. That, uh, <laughs> that, that really captures the essence of someone that discovers that they can talk to animals uh, and has to find their feet and work out how they can work this into their lives and 
and on a, on a larger scale, discover whether what they're doing has any meaning at all for themselves oh. and for living their life and for looking after their family and finding the meaning in, in, in his own life. So, yeah, that is wow. Dr. Brenton, D- it sounds like this movie's dealing with big themes. Very big themes, Brenton. Well, shall we just get into it? Because Let's I, get on into that it. Point- Great pitch. Brenton, Thanks, I like... <laughs> this, I feel like as a listener, and also I'm keen to hear it from the listeners as well, I feel like this pitch is solid. You know, man talks to animals... And let's see shenanigans begin. Brenton, what did you think of this this movie, Shenanigans? <laughs> well, Nathan, let's get into it. So, this is a family-friendly film, first and foremost. Yes. And Eddie Murphy is here doing a doing his performance, doing his thing. It's all to, like... This film is a mess, basically. Let's oh, just, boy, it, is it? It is, an, it is an absolute mess. <laughs> it's um, all over the place. It's all over the place. This, this screenplay is so inconsistent. Mm. It jumps all over the place, uh... And we're going from a, a, a quick screen grab of a joke back to the plot, back to some theme that like hasn't really been explored, back to some other subplot. You know, we're just like we're jumping yeah. constantly from all over the place and going in every direction all at once. Like there's literally scenes in this film where you'll be following a thread of, of a plot line that's going and, and you think it's the main plot line, but it's actually not. And then we'll cut yeah. to some other random couple of characters that will say literally two lines that is totally like unconnected uh well disconnected i should say from mm. what has just been said and and then we just suddenly jump back to originally what we were doing and then we'll jump to something else and we'll jump back to something else and that's kind of the film it's just a big jump from yeah. one thing to the other and it's just so haphazard and like I, I, it's so tonally inconsistent as well with its storylines exactly like some storylines are so heavy and serious and like you're you're seeing eddie murphy and like he's trying to you know connect with his daughter and he's trying to you know have a great marriage and all this kind of stuff and he's questioning his own career but then like it'll cut to like a dying rat that like makes him fart joke you know what i mean yeah totally i think there's I, I think that what this film's going for as well, like that theme I was talking about of finding one's purpose in life, I guess, and, and, yeah. and accepting their kind of quirks and, and, and weirdness and, and, and using that for good, you know? And, you know, it's, <laughs> it's a pretty stock standard message. And, and, and it kind of like familial ties as well, like finding, connecting with your family over, and then like capitalism and big business is thrown in there as well, it's, like it's haphazardly. It's so weird that this isn't a talking animals movie, you know? That's it. Um, and then and then the premise, and then on top of that, you have kind of that that kind of joyful, I guess, like kind of uh, plot line of like that he can talk to animals, which is what kids mm. I think are coming to see. They're coming to see, yeah, to envision someone like this grown person uh, who's a doctor for animals that t- discovers he can talk to animals. But aside from that, really, what has the film got going for it in terms of a plot? Like, I, I was struggling to find the climax of this or finding where it was going. We're just kind of Cause, ambling cause through the these actual scenes. climax of the movie. You don't realize what it is until maybe two scenes before it happens, and you're like, and it has, it. and it has no narrative catharsis. I guess you could say the overall plot of this movie is his family accepting Eddie Murphy, or vice versa. Yeah, but even then, I didn't really invest in those stakes at all. No, not like, at all. And you can t- clearly see that him talking to animals is the coolest thing that's ever happened to him. And it's like, and like, no one is against the idea, except for this weird stint where like, I don't know, it becomes very detrimental to his career. Like, it's just, I don't know why all these elements are mixed together in this movie, Brenton. I don't know either. I feel, I feel, honestly, I feel like there's a good movie in here. I do feel that there's a good movie in here somewhere. It's just, mm. it just got- <laughs> We have to cut out so much of it to get there. It just got- lost along the way mm. and at the same time i think there's a heart to this and i i like eddie murphy he's doing his thing here and like thank god for him because like he just kind of uh, here's the thing though i don't think his performance saves the movie or even like i don't think it does either i don't think anything really saves this movie but thank god for him because at least there's some connection there that you are like you you and kind of you you kind of enjoy his presence, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Mm. And thank God for that. <laughs> yeah, because you like being around him. But that's the thing. He's probably the only one I really love being around. For example, Brenton, I can't stand any of the animals in this movie. I'm like, there's some casting for some of the animals. I'm like, why? Who decided to put this voice actor to match this animal? Ah. Oh. And there's so much there's so much random stuff. Like there's narration that's thrown in at the start of this for some reason. There's Yeah that never, comes <laughs> never back. gets brought back. Yeah, that's it. And there's there's just things just thrown in haphazardly. It, uh, haphazardly is oh. I guess the word that would just describe this film and how it was made. Is it a spoiler to talk about who voices what animal? Or is no, it kind not of at a nice all. surprise? We can talk about performances. Okay. 
All right, good, because I've got some rocks to throw. The first one, the first bloody pebble I've got, Brenton, I'm going to fling at the animals is Chris Rock as a hamster. Oh, gosh. I thought that was the worst one for me. I thought he was the worst. It's so terrible. And you can clearly see it's the most, like, white script written for Chris Rock or what they think Chris Rock would say. Yeah. It's like... And he's talking in the most, like, racist, like, 90s, like, black man accent you can imagine. He's like, what's up, homie? I'm a hamster. What are you doing? Shaking the cage. My it's biggest like- issue with this voice acting, and, and Chris Rock is the main one, though, is mm. that it feels like he is literally, you can, it, it, the track sounds like he's literally in the studio just saying his lines. Like, it yes. doesn't actually feel connected to what is happening in the scenes, connected to the characters, mm. such as Eddie Murphy's character, Dr. Doolittle, or, like, uh, or, or his daughter, who the, uh, he, Chris Rock. Rock's character interacts with as well. It just feels mm. dead in the water all the time, and it feels nothing feels connected, nothing feels right. A couple of the animals do, I will say that. I'm not saying they're great performances or anything, because I kind of agree mm. with you that none of the animals I really had a strong connection to, which is surprising no. given that even the dog. I thought you'd at least latch onto the dog, Brenton. I can't like. I thought that was probably in terms of the. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's get into this as well. <laughs> Brendan's bias comes through as he strokes his own I, dog next I, to him, like a Bond villain. Well, uh, here's the next thing, is that, like, the dog probably had the most effort put into it in terms of the visual effects, because the visual effects fucking suck for some of these animals. Oh, my God. They are absolutely they are, they horrendous. They are garbage. And it's so funny, because Babe, which we probably will make a lot of comparisons to, came out earlier than this movie, and yet the animal effects look radically better. Exactly. Uh, I thought I thought the exact same thing. And when mm. the animals start talking, the first animal I think is the Ellen DeGeneres dog, kind of in the prologue yeah. section. When she started talking and the lips started moving, I was like, oh, no. <laughs> oh, oh God, God even no. Even like... Even Cats and Dogs, which is like a third of the budget this movie had, looked better with its animal CGI. Well, I don't know about that, but yeah, like... <laughs> I, 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 we'll get to it. I, I just uh. feel like a lot of the time I was disconnected and, and it was hard to believe that the animals were actually like talking to him and he was talking back to them. Oh, there was points, it got better as it went on though, but at the start I was like, oh boy, oh no. Yeah. And it doesn't grab you, does it? Yeah, it doesn't sell you at first, that's it, yeah. Exactly. Like, yeah, and like you can clearly see they just got a celebrity voice cast and go, okay, who would be funny as what animal? And like that can work for some films, but for this one, it just falls flat. And I think the biggest hole about us connecting with the animals is just how crude the humor That's is. That's it. It's this. It's this nineties like crass. Like like gassy kind of humor where it's just it's purely slapstick or purely just like aimed at kids. And there's just no intelligence behind a man connecting with animals. There's so much you could do with this, and the film just does nothing. Yeah. Well, the thing I think with the animals as well is that unfortunately my be- my biggest issue, and I think the biggest failing of this film, is the screenplay. I think it is absolutely the screenplay oh, and horrendously written, and, truly. Yeah, and and not just like not only just from a character perspective, a, a dialogue perspective, but the thing tying it together mm. is this plot, which isn't really tied into the animals of what is going on. It, it has nothing to do with it. There's like this whole plot about like them like selling like the hospital and him making millions or whatever it is. It. I don't give two shits about it, honestly. But, but it tries to tie into the animals, but it's kind of like too little. To too late and so there's no real connection to the animals <laughs> do little I, do late I, yeah, <laughs> I, I feel sorry for the editor that edited this film because like what a oh job God. they had on their hands to have all of that you know footage circulating and to try and like make it consistent and try and use the screenplay and try and like figure something oh. out so it looks consistent so eventually like I, I keep saying like it's just random it's random so blots random. like thrown at a canvas basically and we're just meant to we're just jumping from each of these blots basically and they're trying to be connected but it doesn't connect because it's impossible to connect them it it, it just doesn't make a lot of one sense and two, just it, it just feels lost a lot. I just feel lost in this a lot of, a lot of the time. <laughs> it really yeah. does feel lost, doesn't it? It feels like just the animals wandering around Eddie Murphy. Brenton, I have a serious question for you and the listeners that I want to know the answer to. Is this film meant to be a comedy? Yes, it is. I looked up I looked up the exact genre of what this film falls into and oh, and, okay. it, and it states that this is a fantasy comedy film. Oh, f- oh in which come it fails on. on both fronts, I feel. Because I did, I did. Did you laugh once in this movie? I did, did you I laugh did, at anything? I did. I did okay. laugh once. Uh, actually, no. Okay, actually, we'll talk about that I in the spoilers. Twice, then. I laughed twice. I will say. Oh, Brenton, you tease. Yeah, and I and, I, and uh, I will talk about <laughs> both because I've got those dot points right here, and we will talk about those when we get to spoilers. And speaking of which, Nathan, is there anything else we really want to say? I mean, I want to just before we go into it, I want to give one quick shout out to Raven Simone herself. Ah, uh, yes. So, I was saying they they wasted her in this movie. <laughs> Could have done so much more. I I agree. I will also say. In terms of cast members and performances, I thought the guy that plays the vet in this film is oh my god is great. I think he's great. 
And I, I think more of him would have been fantastic. He also stars mm. in The Grinch, starring Jim Carrey. So, like, I'm a bit... Oh, of course you would bloody bring in The, Brin- the Grinch. I'm a bit biased when it comes to the mayor of uh, Whoville. You know what I mean? So, uh, oh, you bastard. So, uh, but I, I do right. enjoy his performance, <laughs> and I feel like more kooky characters like that that were kind of worked mm. into the plot would have would have done this film wonders. Um, but, hey, let's rate this thing. Nathan, whilst I think this film... Has a heartbeat. <laughs> uh, I hear a medical analogy coming into the a yeah, metaphor. Yeah, you get that. Uh, unfortunately, I think this film is is too messy. It's it it kind of loses focus so so many times. At least you have Eddie Murphy here to kind of, I guess, give us some humanity and to give us something to latch onto. But at the end of the day, there's just there's nothing really here. But at the same time, I wouldn't be surprised if kids enjoyed this film. For the, for the gimmick, basically, if you know, of talking to animals and, and liking mm. that. But that's at the end of the day, that's all you're getting out of this is a gimmick. So I'm going to have to give this a thumbs down, unfortunately. Oh, I don't, I don't... There really is. Our, our criteria on this show is that would we put this movie on a Thursday night? You know, that's our go-to staple of this show, Brenton. And, like, I can't imagine... Like, even, like, for a family film, like, if you, like, have the whole, all, all the kids around, like, the parents would just be gauging their eyes out. And I think kids deserve better these days. Like... You know what I mean? At least, at least, Babe has heart. When you see talking animals, you know, even like talking animal movies today, I feel like I mean they're not exactly a a, a wonderful genre of you know game changing work, but you know I feel like there's just better stuff out there than this. Being a being a kid growing up, I never watched this film, but I did watch its I ne- I did watch its sequel. How's the sequel? Is it better? I don't know. Like I haven't watched it in years, uh. but as a kid, I really dug that movie. Uh. So. Hopefully one day we we return to that and we 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 have a watch and we we get into it. Um, Obviously because of the bear as well, like good old Bart the bear. <laughs> oh mate, oh, mate, tell you what, our, our friend the bear, what 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 a bloody champion. He can do yoga. Um, that's a reference to our. That's a for those of you who don't know. That's a reference to our seven seasons uh, animals and oh, film episode, give it a which, which is a cracker. That's that was a good time. <laughs> it's a fun time, but like I don't know. Like I'm just trying to think because this franchise like is just. Because the the RG uh, the RDJ one apparently is horrible. Like these ones that with Eddie Murphy are horrible, maybe. And like, but then the original from the sixties apparently is goodish. I've never seen it. Maybe we should review it. I've never seen it out. either. But no, Brenton, my thumbs down. Like honestly, I, I can't in good conscience <laughs> recommend this to a family or anyone. Really. Hey, well, at least we're consistent for our first review of twenty twenty. Am I right, guys? Am I right? Well, are we right? But also, let us know what you think, listeners. I'd love to know what you rate yeah, this. That's exactly, like- <laughs> that's exactly right. Are we right? I don't know. Maybe there's maybe yeah. there's probably people out there that might have some you know connection to this film. You know, some nostalgia. You know what I'm saying? I'd be interested to hear from mm. you guys whether you think this still holds yeah, up. Yeah, let us know on Insta. You spoiled it. What? The movie. Oh. Where do we start with this with this bloody Caesar salad chopped up movie, Brenton? Like <laughs> Let's 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 compliment sandwich this this mess. Jesus Christ, this woman. We're gonna bring her back for the stills, listeners. But let's talk about her for a little bit. <laughs> Doctor Doolittle is called in in the middle of the night to come treat this lady, and he says, "Do you have a death?" Death wish, miss, whatever your name is, and she says, and the response is, and I wrote it down here, but I took it out of the shell. At that point, I, I, I fucking lost it. And then the, the straw that broke the camel's back was the last time she appears in this film is when she goes into a cube at this press conference that they're buying this this medical center, I guess, and she's eating a crab, like. Like, like she's ripping its legs off in the cubicle and munching into it. Like, like a full size crab. I don't even. I, it looks like she's eating it raw too. It doesn't look. Also, why would she take it into the bathroom? It's like no one knows that she's allergic to crab. It's like. Where did she get it from? And why did she take it to the press conference? Because that wasn't on like the that wasn't on like the snack table. You know what I mean? Is there like because because I think another character mentions it where she's like trying to like see Eddie Murphy. Like she just wants to see him or an excuse to see him. But she's clearly, like, trying to kill herself just to see Eddie Murphy. Like, well, it's just weird. Like, is it the fact that she... Does she, like, get off to having a needle in her ass? Do you reckon that's I th- it? I like... think it might be that they're going for is that she just loves the taste of shellfish so much that she just eats it anyway. But, fuck, it's just... <laughs> it's kind of weird. But, like, it's just not worth it. It's just, like... I mean, I love a good seafood buffet, Brent, and you'll see me at the bloody seafood section. But it's not worth triggering all this. And it's, like, especially because of what it does to her as well. Goodness. 
it's just, and it's so incompatible with the rest of the movie because normally she's inserted in a very serious scene and I think it's done because the producers would have been like, feck, this film is, the scene is too serious. We need to humor it up. So they throw in the, the seafood lady. The producers were like, you know, they watched the first kind of screening and they were like, you know, I think we should do some wrist shits because you know what I think this film needs? <laughs> Guys, Betty, I think this film needs more shellfish lady. You know what I'm saying? That shit's funny. Like, and then, <laughs> and then, so they added in, they were like, you know what I want to see? Her ass, her, her expanding ass <laughs> as she has an allergic reaction to the shellfish. That's funny. And then he has to, and Jesus, then he has, this is exactly what and then he has to like, like, and then he has to like stab it with a needle to like get it to stop swelling. And then he gives it a pat on the buttocks. But here's the thing, as a child, I would have been mortified seeing this woman have like a needle up her ass and just like. The, like, the way she exposes herself in that scene as well, when she kind of like she she like k- takes her like surgical gown and just kind of like flips it to the side to expose her cheek, it's just like, oh boy, what are we what are we trying to say here? You know what I mean? Hey, and I'm why is this in a children's movie? But you know what, Nathan? When it comes to comedy, and I think I think our listeners will agree with this, and if they've listened to any of our episodes, look, I'm fine for no logic when it comes to comedy. I'm fine for like stupid mm. shit to happen because I think it's quite I think it's quite funny, and it, it'll break up a scene, and it, and it, it just makes you laugh for for, for stupidity's mm. sake. You know what I mean? Yeah. This takes that and it just kind of rams it down your throat you know what i mean you kind of just want to laugh at something like another scene that the vet comes on screen like it's like <laughs> it's set up as like a sad moment as like the animal's been put down and he just turns to dr lou doolittle with a cheesy smile and he like turns like and sees like what can i help you with doctor like that was like a nice moment of like comedy you know what i mean oh yeah he's great i get around him like he's very very funny i also um get around um paul giamatti at the at the asylum, oh, I I I can't. This is another one of those subplots that just doesn't go anywhere. Like oh. we're given all this exposition of like how suddenly like how they were like you know classmates at medical school and that Eddie Murphy was the top of the class and Paul Giamatti was the bottom of the yeah, class. All this exposition, and then I was like, why just... are they in the same field? Like it just raises questions of like he's a psychologist, isn't he? He's working at like a like a a, a mental asylum, and Eddie yeah. Murphy's like a doctor. Like a like a like a, a GP. It's, or something. it's completely like, incompatible. It's like no, no, there's not one that's better than the other. It's like you, they also they both help different things. That's it. They wouldn't have been together. They wouldn't have been in the same faculty. You know no. what I mean? Like, it's but Paul Giamatti actively fucks with him, and it's kind of weird as well. Especially the scene where he gets the chimpanzee, but for some reason he got a Spanish one. It's just like. You know what I mean? It's just like it's weird. Also, just get another animal, Eddie Murphy. It's anything. It's like what I would have done in that scenario is that I would have just like talked to the ants and I would have asked the ants to like spell out a word on the pavement and go, "Look, there's a bloody animal I made do something." You know what I mean? Like it's so easy for Eddie Murphy to prove he has the ability to talk to animals. Like there's all these animals about, but he never once does it. Yeah, that's another thing I have an issue with his with his powers. It's never explained how he can talk to animals in the first place. I don't think it needs explaining. I, to be fair, I think as soon as we get into that, it's we're, we're we're lost. Like we don't. It doesn't need to be explained. It just it just feels to me like the whole plot of the movie is the fact that like no one accepts that he talks to animals because it's like he could be crazy or whatever. But it takes so long to get yeah. there. You know what I mean? Like like he's hiding it from the family and like the family's so stupid. I mean they've got goats in the house. They've got sheep in the house. They've got yeah. pigs in the house. And the wife the wife doesn't come out and go like. What the fuck's going on? Like it's it's just bizarre. It's ludicrous. Like, like the fact that he has like a full farm, like farms worth of animals in his apartment at one night, and he's healing them all up, and his family just does not notice. It's like, come on! Even the wife would like come out of bed going, "Honey, you okay?" Like, it's ludicrous. Also, yeah. how do all these animals get into his like San Francisco apartment? Like, there's goats and there's like like ducks and all this kind of stuff. It's like, how the hell do they get in the building undetected? Hey man, I I don't know. I I can't give you an answer. I can't. And I don't feel. I I feel like you don't really need to give an answer at the same time. Like I. I but it's just nothing. Nothing happens in this films that 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 is consistent. Nothing. Like at point at points we like point out the they point out the inconsistencies and whatnot and like as a as a joke and you're like okay well at least you're pointing it out but other times they just don't and then you're like well am i meant to, is this moment meant to be serious is it meant to be funny like exactly. what is this moment you know what brenton uh, the biggest thing with this movie is that there's so many things that does not belong in a children's movie it's just so out of place case in point case in point the subplot of that 
Eddie Murphy can't have sex with his wife. Yeah. Because the animals keep interrupting. And it's just never, like, it just keeps coming up. Like, it's always like, mm, let's, and then he's suddenly like, I gotta leave because there's an animal, like, outside the door and oh. I can't show you. And he's, like, barking in the bedroom, like, come on. I think, I think your partner would understand if, like, you were going to, like, get it on, basically. And then... You just heard like a goat, like <laughs> or a sheep, like you know, barring behind. Eddie you. Murphy's just like I've been. I've got some very creative ideas, honey. And she's like, oh. <laughs> or like a ram, like burst onto the scene. Like I think, I think your partner would understand that you know that you should probably get the animals out before you yeah. start. Yeah, it is so bizarre. And there's like a moment where like she's like trying to like go back to this album and be like, oh, he's like, do you believe me? And she's like, no. And you're like, yeah, I wouldn't believe you either. And like the fact that you had animals in our apartment is very concerning. Like, it's just bonkers did you reckon brenton that when they were at the asylum the movie could have segued into the film the lobster absolutely and i would have loved it just for some reason like the reason he can explain it, he can talk to animals is because they too are people that like didn't find love and they just turned into animals and they now he's next i'm down with that let's go <laughs> like, like, like like let let let's make something happen in this plot you know what i mean not just oh. like points that we have to hit because the, the screenplay said we have and it's so lazy and just ugh. jeez God. you know what another child thing that doesn't belong in this movie brenton is the opening scene which immediately lost me because we see this poor priest like a like, like charge at this child and try and perform an exorcism because he can talk to animals and it's like shocking <laughs> how violent it is yeah i was kind of lost in that scene as well i have to admit i was just kind of like what is like but I, I was coming from this perspective of like like what is happening like what what's going on and then again is this meant to be funny or is it oh. you know and i think it is meant to be funny but it just loses you from the get-go brenton like i just i found myself just nitpicking the whole movie like even when like poor like the the little girl like like shows eddie murphy her bird egg i'm like sweetie look at the size of that egg that is not a bird egg like <laughs> She holds this thing as though she got it from like two thousand, like the Disney film Dinosaur, where it's like a like a like a bronchosaurus like egg, and she's like carrying it about, and I'm like, that's not going to hatch into a bird. Can we talk about the tiger plot? Yeah, because it's just so egregious. Because like, because how does he end up going to the zoo again? He goes there with his fam or something like that. I don't even think it's that. I think I think that. He gets a. He gets the. Everyone comes. All these animals comes to a department. They're like, you need to help. And then he leaves, and he goes to like some church tower or like a bell tower or something. That's right. And the tiger's up there, about to jump off. And you're like, oh, okay, so it's a suicidal tiger. In a children's film, by the way. <laughs> yeah, and the tiger's gonna jump off because it it is having like blurred vision and is like. Yeah. And it's like what? And it keeps threatening to kill itself because of this. It's like I'll hang myself in my cage, and it's like. <laughs> It's like, jeez. It's like, could you imagine, like, you're in a yeah. circus and a tiger has had the ability to hang itself? Like, it would make world news. It's like, how on earth did this animal do this? Can you imagine, like, yeah, you wake up in the morning and they come to the, the, the cage and the tiger's hung itself. It's just like, well, okay, regular Tuesday morning, I guess, like, at, at the circus. That's like, the thing. They could have done an amazing subplot on animal cruelty in the circus. They could have really executed that well. But they just instead... I even keep the tiger suicidal because of how poorly he's being treated. But it's just never mentioned. He's just, like, depressed for no reason. Well, he is. It's, like, because he has blurred vision and has headaches. Yeah. Oh, yeah, for a medical reason. Like, yes, but it's just, like, you could have tied it to a, a wider theme, you know? It's, like, it's just a weird way to explore mental illness that these animals just have it. And it's, like, you know, I don't know what the film was trying to say about it. But it's not even saying that he has mental illness, really. He's just, the tiger's logic is literally, I have blurred vision and a headache, so I should just kill oh. myself. And then as soon as it's fixed, it's suddenly, oh, I'm all good. It's just, yeah. It doesn't even go anywhere interesting. Like, even, th like, there's, there's huge themes, like, introduced. Like, there's a monkey that's dealing with alcoholism. Yeah. And it's just, and yeah. nothing happens. And it's just kind of left there as a joke. And, it's, uh, yeah, they make alcoholism a joke. It's like, come on. And it's, to kids as well. But it's not consistent. Oh. Again, like, it just kind of, it's introduced and it's just like, there it is. And then it's just left. And then it kind of comes back, but then it doesn't. The thing I hate about the tiger plot is that it becomes a climax yeah. of the film. And also, there's no tension in the scene as well, because you know it's going to be okay. Like, like, you're not holding your breath at all, because you know it's a kid's movie and you know it's going to be fixed. So there's absolutely no tension in it. Totally. Yeah. Ah, oh, it's just... And also, it's ludicrous that, like, the animals stop the police from entering the building. It's like, really? It's like, all these animals stop San Francisco's police force? It's like, come on. It's like, they would definitely get inside the building one way or another. Yeah. Ah. Oh. You know what I hate as well? It, it it propagates the idea that, for some reason, doctors can just segue into becoming a vet. I know, right? It's, <laughs> it's like, you can't just switch. It's not like if you know how to fix a human, you can fix all these animals. Yeah, look, the anatomy of a human versus a tiger, we're very different creatures, you know what I mean? Thank you. Brenton, we are very different creatures, you know what I mean? <laughs> like, you can't just slap on a bandaid and go, ah, oh, she'll be right. Like, ah, <laughs> it just doesn't work like that. It's just, ah, oh, 
It's ludicrous. This Also, well, no one else is ludicrous. The most ludicrous thing of this movie, actually, is the very ending where the dog, where the lizard's born, the stupid lizard egg, and then the dog admits it got drunk <laughs> and then it slept with a tiger. Did you hear this line? I did, but I can't... It was so fast and just, like, so, like, they were obviously trying not to focus on it, but it's just... But it's true. It was like, wait, wait, what? And then we kind of moved on. And I was like, wait, what? Oh my He's like, that, that was that time I did get drunk and, you know. I fucked a tiger and you're just like, what? <laughs> <laughs> like, what are you what are you talking about? It was at the end of Babe 2 when, like, you know, the poodle left the dog and, and she's like, oh, I ran, ran off and left him with the kids. It's this weird dark joke that just ends the movie and you're just like, what is going on right now? Like, oh. It's bizarre. It is bizarre. Uh, you know what a saving grace is for this movie, though, Brenton? <laughs> What is that? <laughs> it's it's this fact I read up about the movie. It's and and and, and now I now want to watch it with this fact in my head because Eddie Murphy was terrified of all the live animals. Oh really? Yeah, he was so spooked at all of them, and he insisted that as, as many as possible they could be superimposed digitally into all the scenes because when he couldn't, um, because when he acted in the same room as them, he would end up screaming by the end of the take. Jeez. So I reckon that kind of works though for the start of the film when he's like terrified of the fact that like he's having this this experience of being able to talk to these creatures and he keeps oh, yeah. screaming. So maybe they were just like the outtakes of like him, like having to actually deal with like, there was a Guinea pig in a cage next to him in the car. And he was just like, ah! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I do love th- thinking that those Eddie Murphy screams are real. Cause they're great. But also like, you just can't take him seriously. Like he's scared of a hamster. It's like, come on, yeah. mate. It's like, you know, you're a doctor. You probably dealt with like car crash victims and all this kind of stuff. And yet this is what you're screaming at. Puts him over it's the like, edge. He can't deal with it. Oh, it just makes absolutely no sense. Oh, Brenton. Oh, poor Eddie Murphy. Like, poor Eddie just, Murphy. Also, like, I can't help but hear a donkey this whole film as well, which is just another impediment. <laughs> you know hey, what I mean? I'm, like, I'm, 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 I think we've made ground on this podcast. I think we finally reviewed a film that has starred Eddie Murphy, and I'm really glad about it because I really like him. I think, I think, <laughs> oh. I think, he, I think he's got a good presence, and I think he's a funny guy. I just think he's wasted kind of on uh, with this screenplay and you know this film. I think. Have you seen many of his films? I have actually. I I think he's quite funny. What's your favorite Eddie Murphy film? Uh, <laughs> you you want to know? Don't say uh, Norbert. It's, no, no, no. I've never seen the Norbert films, and I don't really want to. Uh, but my favorite of his films that I used to love watching as a kid was actually Daddy Daycare. Oh, great choice. That's a great one. But if we're talking about like his like serious, I guess like uh, more serious performances, because I think he's a great actor as well. I love watching. Have you ever seen Dreamgirls? No, I haven't actually. That's when he was nominated for an Oscar, right? Yeah, his performance yeah. in Dreamgirls is astounding. I think he's absolutely fantastic in it. And I think he probably should have won that year from memory, though I can't mm. quite remember who else was nominated with him. But it's it's a fantastic performance and worth watching over this. Maybe not for the kids, though. If you're looking for a kid's film, watch Daddy Daycare over this, man. Yeah, like, watch Daddy Daycare. Yeah. That's amazing. With watch Ed the Murphy. broccoli versus the carrot. It's bloody great. Oh, um, it's so good. Also, I, I love coming to America. That's a great one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gosh, it's really about that. Yeah, yeah. It's really, it's really great. Can I, Nathan? Can it happen? Can I take us on a little tangent? Oh, buddy, I tell you what, I love a good tangent. Nathan, I've seen Eddie Murphy in the flesh. What? Nathan, in two thousand and seven, the year it was. <laughs> <laughs> I was 12 years old. Actually, no, I was 11 years old because it was June. And ah. uh, I was over in the United States. And uh, we were on a family trip and we stopped by New York City. <laughs> Is it like a Simpsons episode where you're just walking around New York and you just bump into a celebrity? Nathan, <laughs> it's exactly like that. Oh my I was God. Wa- I was walking down the street and we came to this section where there was just a lot of people gathered around. And we we're like, what is going on here? Turns out, they were shooting on location of a film. Oh. And I was standing there and I was like, oh, I wonder, the dad was like, I wonder if like there's going to be any famous actors. And Eddie Murphy just strolled right past us. Like we're behind this barricade thing and he just like walked. He was like probably two meters from me. He walked past us and he kind of just kind of acknowledged the crowd and whatnot. And I was like, that's Eddie Murphy. Dad was like, oh. it is. Cause I was like, I'd watch daddy daycare. I knew who that was. And I'd watch Dr. Doolittle too. And I kind of freaked <laughs> out a little like, and he was there kind of in the flesh and he was shooting that film that I can't quite remember. Like, I can't remember the name of, but I don't remember if you ever saw the marketing uh, of Eddie Murphy played this. I think it was like an alien, but it was like a mini version of a human that was like a tiny, tiny human being, but he was like controlling oh. a robot, a robot of like a oh. human sized version of himself. 
Yes, I never saw yes, the yes, film, yes, yes. But I remember seeing the poster and seeing the marketing and being like, I saw Eddie Murphy shooting that film. But Eddie Murphy walked past and then his stunt double, who looked identical to him, was like following uh, him as well. And it was a surreal experience. It's Eddie like, Murphy. Hey. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Wow. But yeah, that's the end of the story. I that's seen so cool. This man I guess as a kid, you would have been very tall next to you as well. Like, you would have been very looming. Like, I was yeah. looking up at the man. But yeah, oh. I'm, I'm a fan, Eddie. If you if you're listening, <laughs> oh Eddie, good day. I want if if I met Eddie, I'll just have him like spurt lines from like Shrek and Mulan. That's, exactly. That's the thing. Like, and in yeah. the morning, I'm eating waffles. I'm oh, eating classic. Waffles. Even as Mushu, people don't talk about Mushu as much because oh. I love Mushu. Do you know the live action of Mulan? That's uh, the live action version of Mulan that is coming out. Mushu does not feature. He's gone. Yeah, he's no Mushu. They're just gonna have a phoenix instead. And I'm like, I don't want a bird. I want Eddie Murphy. Like he's I, great. I shed a tear. I'm not gonna lie. I did shed a oh. tear. Oh, but obviously it makes sense. Like in this like fully Chinese movie, it's gonna be a little bit weird having <laughs> like like Eddie Murphy as a as a Chinese dragon. You know what I mean? Like it would be out of place. It is true. It is true. But the animated film it works and it's great. And I love how the ancestor ghosts just like all like shit on him. <laughs> like you're a waste of space, Mushu. And <laughs> they just keep kicking him out. Oh, uh, he's like, you You got a lucky cricket. <laughs> Shout out to our audience, though. If you've seen Eddie Murphy in the flesh, please tweet at us. Please yeah. comment on our Instagram oh. post. Let us know what you what. Give us an Eddie Murphy man. story. I love good. I love meeting celebrity stories. They're funny as anything. But Nathan, now that we've talked about the spoilers of this film, mm. I think it's time to talk about what steals this movie. <laughs> oh, it's blinding. If you don't know what steals this movie or what this segment is about on the show... Mm. In this segment, Nathan and myself choose a still, a frame, as if you will, from the film that we've watched of something that is either funny, that is something that is poignant, something that sums up the movie for us, and when we're watching it, something that stuck out to us that we just had to grab and show it to you guys. Now, today's still comes from Mr. Nathan himself. Nathan, oh, yes. can you describe what we are looking at here? All right. So, listeners, um, if you want to see this photo, go to our Instagram, go to our YouTube. You can you can see all the photos there. Um, we put it up every week. This week, it is the lobster lady. Not the lobster lady. It's the it's the, the crab lady. The shellfish lady. The shellfish, will, pardon me. The shellfish lady. Because the very first time you see her, like, you know, she hasn't got that allergic reaction just yet. She seems quite normal. But then the next scene you meet her, the camera kind of pans up and you see her face... And it's, oh boy, <laughs> it's expanded, it's it's bloated, it's got red rashes everywhere. It's quite horrendous to look at. And poor Eddie Murphy, it, it cuts back to him, and he's just flabbergasted. He's like, this 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 lady, oh dear. She kind of has like a kind of twist of the head as the camera just like, like the edit kind of changes uh. to her of like this kind of little like turn of the head to the camera and it's just like what the fuck am I looking at <laughs> yeah she looks so puzzled as well like she doesn't even know she's in the hospital it reminds me a little bit of the still we had for two hands with the woman who dies in the apartment and like and her like final expression before she like cuts her out alive Nathan I forgot about that oddly placed scene in that film as well <laughs> For some reason, movies in the 90s decided to have these, like, weird characters close to death just pull awkward expressions. Like, ah, oh, God, thank God humans improved in movies. Am I hey, right? Hey, mate, if this if this still sums up this movie, you know we're kind of reaching. You oh. know what I mean? Like, It's just painful, isn't it, Brenton? <laughs> Nathan. Hey. Shall we take a look at this film's poster? Uh, Brenton. Yes. Let's look at this film's poster. But is it art? Brenton, this poster, I tell you what... <laughs> I've mixed feelings. I've mixed feelings. It's about very nineties, isn't it? It's like main character leaning in a certain direction, going at the camera. I feel it could have worked though. I feel like the pose that Doctor Doolittle has. I like the idea that he's mm. kind of, uh, you know, he's got he's got his little instrument popping out of his ears, and it's you know it's going down to a bunch of animals that are talking through it to him. Like we get, it's it's a good idea in terms of we get the fact that he can talk to the creatures. It's funny to see Eddie Murphy pulling a funny expression or whatever. That's great. But this Photoshop, like, shit that's been done to this poster of inserting these animals into this frame is just absolutely terrible. It's like just, it's, it's horrible. It's like the one the worst photoshops. Like you can clearly see the line around them. It maybe it works for a kids film because it literally looks like a child has got a bunch of animal stickers and have just kind of like pasted them on top of each other onto this poster, you know what I mean? Oh. And also it picks very boring animals that don't that Dr. Doolittle could be fixing. It's like, put the tiger on the poster. It's like... I feel like it should have been... I feel like the ideal poster is just the dog as it is and cut the rest of the animals. <laughs> make the dog actually... Make the dog a bit bigger in the same... Like, in the same, like, 
Because the moment, Eddie Murphy like the dog is behind him, I'd move him in line with Eddie Murphy and have him looking up and talking into the thing. That's great. Okay, you know what would hook me into this movie, Brenton? May I suggest something? Okay, what if it was the alcoholic monkey? And like, with the, the whole poster is just the monkey and it's zoomed him on him and maybe he's haunting a bottle of Jack Daniels. And the poster <laughs> says as the tagline... Can Dr. Do Little cure alcoholism? Ooh, Question title. mark. And that's all you need. And tell you what, if I saw that, that would get me Past front row here. in the what? cinema. The you should go work for Bob Iger, you know what I mean? I feel like I feel like you'd, you'd kill <laughs> oh, Yeah, for there. a children's movie. Alcoholic Jeez. monkeys. G'day. Robert, if you're out there, please hire me. I'd love to just give me give me your Disney Plus library. I'll redo all the posters. Like <laughs> Well, Brenton, should we segue into some special segments? Special segments. Now and then we just have things we need to talk about, a specific movie, this a specific movie, Brenton. And, and this one, we're bringing back an old, old uh, segment that we did back in episode three, actually, from Mononoke. We love animals, Brenton. We do love animals on this podcast. We talk about them a lot. And uh, I want to highlight a particular animal today from the movie, Brenton. Which animal would you like to highlight, my friend? Out of all of them. Because I, I disliked so many of them, Brenton. <laughs> they all annoyed me in various ways. I want I want to... <laughs> Especially the rats, because we didn't talk about them as well. I want to give a little quick shout out to the rats because they pissed me off the most. But on the other end of the spectrum, Brenton, it's got to be the dog, right? That's the best animal in this movie. Yeah, I'd agree. I'd agree. What's his name? Lucky? Lucky's great because, like, you know, he pretends to... Does he actually get run over at the start? I can never tell. He He gets hit by a car at the start and then he says, watch where you're going, bozo, or something like that. And you're like, geez, man. You just got hit by, like, a four-wheel drive, like... (laughs) In the most Tom Hanks, but actually not really Tom Hanks voice he could have done. Totally. Hey, the thing with that dog is as well, Lucky, is that at first I was like, oh, that's Bill Murray. And then I was like, wait, no, it's not. It's someone trying to sound like Bill Murray, which is worse. Mm. <laughs> like, the- I, Yeah, I know. God. I think, yeah, it's funny. They probably could have gone Bill Murray, but he was obviously he was going to do the Garfield movies instead, which are equally <laughs> as terrible. So... <laughs> I feel like, but I feel like, would the movie even be improved with Bill Murray as the dog? No, because the dog isn't actually, as much as the dog is like the main animal in this film, it doesn't actually feature that much, you know what I mean? Lucky's not in this film quite a lot. It kind of hangs out with the daughter and then it just kind of just leaves. Like, <laughs> that's really it. This segment for me is about animals that you just like, a lot of animals in films, you just like love them and you always want them to come on screen and when they're there and when something happens to them, obviously, because watching, like for me personally, watching, you know, anything horrible happen to an animal in anything is just like the worst mm. experience. And so you learn, to, you just care for these things because mm. they're, they're animals and it's like, oh man, like I have such a connection with this creature, which is kind of funny, like that, that we kind of, you know, impose this love on these, on these animals. But... My point is with that is is that that's what the segment's about and we should be spoiled for choice Brenton with the animals we can like prop up onto this. I will give a shout out to one animal I did like. I like the owl. Oh yeah. I like when the owl had the stick in the twing, I felt something for it. I'm like, "No, Hedwig, poor owl. Get the stick out." Meh. Meh. I I just kind of meh. I I that's how I feel towards but like to most of the animals I'm just like, "Oh yeah. That thing exists." Great. <laughs> <laughs> Go away little raccoon. <laughs> Another special segment I want to bring up, Brenton, is our reoccurring uh, segment, MCU, where we see if a movie fits into the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And Brenton, I do want... (laughs) Absolutely. Absolutely. Dr. Doolittle could be... Could could you imagine? Can you imagine the final... uh, Spoilers for Avengers Endgame. The final battle for Endgame when everyone rocks up and they charge Thanos and his army... And you just see Dr. Lo- Doolittle, like, commanding, like, an army of, like, grizzly bears, like, to oh attack. My God. Like, and, and he's and he's That'd riding a stag or something, and he's just, like, going into fight. You know what I mean? Oh. And, like, these grizzlies are running, and they're all like, yeah, thanks, Dr. Doolittle. <laughs> and just... That'd be amazing. Yeah, the the, 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 the the farting rats just pounce on, like, Thanos' head. Oh, like, the three doctors, I guess. Like, Dr. Banner, do- Dr. <laughs> Dr. Strange, and Dr. Doolittle. Like... Oh, my goodness. I guess he just, like, Dr. Strange, just, like... Like fighting off some ducks that are trying to peck at him. Oh my gosh! Like, <laughs> then they come back to trying like to brush them off. They just have off. like a side scene between Doctor Doolittle and Doctor Strange when they're talking about like the the art of surgery, you know, and and how Doctor Strange is kind of sad he can't <laughs> do it anymore, you know. Oh my goodness! I can see like like all the animals coming um with Doctor Strange and sorry with Doctor Doolittle, and then they think Rocket Raccoon's with him. <laughs> <laughs> and Rocket's like, I'm not with him. And uh, Doctor Doolittle tries talking to Rocket, and Rocket's like, Yeah, I know, I can talk to everyone. <laughs> yeah, totally. And everyone's like, er, and Doctor, everyone's like, What's your superpower? He's like, I can talk to animals. And it's like, Well, so can we. Point in case, Hey, Rocket. <laughs> how's it, how's it <laughs> he's just like standing there with his giant gun. <laughs> and then, and then Doctor Doolittle like sheds a tear, and he's like, I thought there was no one else like me. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> That'd be amazing. It's just like, ah. Oh. And I can see, like, like the dogs just, like, charging as well. It's like, I can imagine, like, Scarlet Witch with, like, a dog just, like, petting it as she, like, ch- like throws her red shit everywhere. It's like, oh. Or, or Tony Stark makes some Iron Man armor for the dogs, and we have the oh. Iron Dogs. Oh, Nathan, the possibilities are endless. How has Disney not thought of that? I mean, out of the Marvel library from memory, I think the closest do little character we have is Squirrel Girl. True. Do you know about her? I do. I do. Yeah. Yeah. Because she's great. Because also there's like comics where like she'll command an army of squirrels to attack Thanos and then she'll win. (laughs) And it's amazing. That's the movie we needed. That's It would have been great if in Dr. Doolittle, Eddie Murphy's like, I have the power of the gods. And he just like commands an animal army over like San Francisco and it turns into like Rise of the Planet of the Apes. (laughs) And just like the humanity like falls apart. Oh gosh. Yeah. And uh, and, and Eddie Murphy's like, I control the animals now. (laughs) Could you imagine though, if there was an after credit scene in this and like Samuel L. Jackson just steps out from behind, like, you know, from under, like from under the same, like, you know, cart that the tiger was going into the surgery on, like, you know, and he's just like, I'm building a team (laughs) of special individuals. (laughs) And Eddie Murphy's like, I've already got a team. And then the tiger just rocks up. Like, (laughs) (laughs) Uh, oh, did you love that, Brenton? That Rocky got a little shout out in our movie? I did. I did. I did enjoy it. My heart warmed, Brenton. I'm like, oh, there's a mention of a better movie. Like, <laughs> I also liked how there was a scene, I believed, where they were watching uh, the original Doctor Doolittle film, like on on the, on the television. I liked that little shout out as well. Yeah, that was a nice. That little was moment. great. Yeah, yeah, I thought that was really really good. Yeah, that's a nice oh. little tasteful kind of like you know, oh, like that's a shout out to that that we. There's a better property. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, it's the title. So, title talk, Brenton. Was Dr. Doolittle in Dr. Doolittle? Dr. Doolittle was indeed in Dr. Doolittle. And you know what? <laughs> I'm glad he was. Yeah. Uh, it was great. I think this is a great title. I think, like, what else were you going to call it? I don't know. It was Don't Eat Crabs. <laughs> don't Eat Crabs if you're allergic to it. Like, the you, you got problems if you do, clearly. Jeez. Oh. No, I, again, naming the protagonist, uh, the, the title of the protagonist, it's a good move. It's like, and you know what? He was doing some doctoring. It made he a, was doctoring. Yeah. <laughs> and you know what? He was do-littling as well. You know what I mean? Do-little. Does he do little in the movie? I mean, not really. Like, he's probably working the hardest out of all of them. Yeah, he does quite a lot. <laughs> <laughs> they could have called him do-lot. That's what they should have done. <laughs> there you go. There's uh, the title. Well done. Pass it here. What? The power to the people. Brenton... I love Rotten Tomatoes right now, but I don't love it enough because the critics gave it 43% and the audiences gave it 34 Whoa, the audiences were lower than the critics. Wow, that's amazing that, that audiences were not as kind than the critics. I thought the wow. critics would bash this shit. Wow, and this film still got a sequel. <laughs> uh, must have made <laughs> it, it made money. Yeah. I think that's the only reason. I just think I've just made money. Totally, totally. And yeah. you can like at the end of the day, I can see why. I can see why kids would want to go see this to see someone who is able to talk to animals. Like it's such a cool uh. thing, you know. But Dominic R gave this half a star and said, "Wow, half. Ah, uh, what the hell happened to you, Eddie Murphy's? Out of five. <laughs> Uh, Thanks, Dominic. It's true. I mean, what did happen to Eddie Murphy? Because he had a great period for so long. I, I really don't feel this tarnishes the Eddie Murphy name. No. You know what I mean? Because you've seen Dolomite, haven't you? How is it? How is he in that? In what? And Dolomite is my name. You've seen that, haven't you? No. Ah, neither have I. Because apparently he is quite good, you know? like Yeah, yeah. But uh, I guess end of tangent there. <laughs> yeah, I know. I thought you were going to get this great little thing like, oh, Dolomite, it's the return of the legend. But no, I mean, we got the Oscars coming up, so maybe we'll talk about it then. Maybe, maybe. Um, James Hamilton uh, wrote, I always tried speaking to dogs long before I even knew this movie existed. Nathan, don't you wish you could talk to dogs? Oh, it'd be great. And that's the thing, like, uh, thinking in real life you could talk to dogs. I tried talking to snakes most because of Chamber of Secrets. But, like, I remember, like... like <laughs> <laughs> How'd that go? How'd that go down? Not very well, Brenton. <laughs> but I do remember going to, like... um. Australia Zoo or like the one on Dream World, one of them on the Gold Coast and like, I remember like going to the snake section and I remember like wait I, I was with all my friends this is embarrassing but I'm gonna tell the story anyway I remember like waiting for all my friends to walk past and then it was just me and the snake and I genuinely in my heart believed I could talk to snakes so I just leaned down and waited till no one was around me and I started going and like quoting the parcel tongue from Chamber and the snake turned its head I think just by pure coincidence and I got so excited my heart skipped a beat and they just kind of like just slid them back down and I'm like, oh, it didn't work. Nathan, you strange child. But that's the thing. I would have loved to watch this movie and had that wish fulfillment done. But obviously, but Eddie Murphy doesn't even milk the fact he can talk to animals. He doesn't like ask them what it's like to be a dog. He just, just does his own thing. 
I kind of like that about the movie, though. I like that it's kind of it's it's so like kind of second nature to him that he just kind of has this conversational tone with them. Uh, what I was gonna say though, isn't it funny though, like how we kind of already do talk to animals anyway. Like, yeah, that's the thing. Everyone acts like it's so strange that he's talking to animals, but like we always like we kind of like we impart our humanity onto animals anyway when we meet them at the zoo or whatever and we talk to mm. them and go, oh, you're a good boy to a dog or whatever it is or you know. It's interesting just how we do that. You know what I mean? Like it is kind of weird. Yeah, it, and but it's great. You know, that's the reason we have bets. You know, it's, it's this great companionship, and and the movie does capture that a little bit. How much you know we rely almost on animals to really ground us. But yeah, like yeah, I it. And also, what I think this film doesn't do is it doesn't celebrate animals. No, like like the love that we have of them. Like it doesn't feel like you know like Beethoven. Beethoven's a great totally. animal film. Yeah. You know? where we celebrate the love of them, or even like Lassie, all that kind of stuff. It's, it just feels, the animals in this film just confis- consistently feel like an interruption yeah. or or like an annoyance, which it just shouldn't represent our relationship to No, them. Nathan, that's a very good point. It would have been great. There's so many things you could do with a man that talks to animals. Imagine if Eddie Murphy was stationed out in Africa and he had to stop the poachers and he could talk to the animals and warn them. You know what I mean? Nathan, there's so many possibilities and maybe we'll get a reboot that actually stars Eddie Murphy again one day. Maybe after the RD Drew oh. one. I don't know. I don't know. Once that bombs and loses all the money. <laughs> Cheese 4G. What a great name, Cheese 4G. Well, <laughs> I forgot how fake the talking animals looked in this movie. I still love it, though. I mean, I guess nostalgia would definitely feed into that a little bit. I'm so glad you and I don't have nostalgia for this movie. Like, Hey, man, or maybe just we're wrong and people think it's great. You guys let us know because, yeah. like, I'm gent. Please do. I, I, hey, this film made money, and you know, I guess people out there really do enjoy this movie and enjoy the gimmick mm. and enjoy Eddie Murphy and 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 it's enough for them. You know what I mean? And that's fine. That's yeah. I can totally see why it would be fi- like you know enough for some people, but just for me, it's just mm. it's a bit of a mess. It's a bit of a jumbled. It's just a uh, mess. I really want to know what like the the the. Proponent, like I want to know what the champions of this film are. You know, I want to know who like really props up, going, "This is a great movie for X, Y, Z." Like, I want to hear from you guys. Like, I'll, I'll please like like comment on any of our things. Just like I want to, I want to know. <laughs> Let us know what you think about Doctor Doolittle. Is it worth watching, or is it mm. worth like snapping that DVD cover in half and throwing half to your dog and taking the other half? You know, and and I don't know giving it to a suicidal tiger i don't know those who write the comments in the stars like you're, you're the absolute best we love you to bits like, it, we, it helps the show it really does it's great to get it out there so nathan that is dr do little we did it brenton we dr do little and he really it really <laughs> we talked to the animals and we found absolutely nothing hey this film really do did little for us didn't it <laughs> you got him ladies and gentlemen ah but yeah please let us know what you think like you know, we're on all the... Brenton, we're on all the socials. What are we on? We are on Instagram. We are on Twitter. We are on the YouTubes. We're also... We've also got an email, so you can snap us through a little email if you want as well. Get in touch. We'll write back to you. We'll send you some animal gifts, you know? But we're all about that gift life. I love the gift life. <laughs> I live it every day. But what was that, boy? What was that, Brenton? Ruff, 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 ruff. Are, are, are you talking about my crab? Ruff, ruff, ruff. Did, did, did you not like it? I said don't eat any more if you're allergic to it, you idiot. But you didn't like me, crab.